They say a man's best friend is a dog, which seems to be a sentiment that's been reverberated throughout recorded history, acknowledged in works like the Odyssey, but first recorded in the 1700s, set by King Frederick II of Prussia. This love or testament to some sort of instinctive or primal bond is something that I think Oda might further explore within the Egghead arc. This video is going to be less of a theory and more like a whirlwind of connections that serves as a reference to possibly look towards for solving some of the biggest mysteries we have on Egghead. Like is Vegapunk truly going to die or what the heck is the egg structure that Vegapunk seems to have created. I think I might have found a huge inspiration for the Egghead arc that centralizes on Vegapunk's appearance and his satellite's concepts, and because these connections exist, it really makes you wonder what Oda might do with these other random connections that honestly are huge plot points in the reference material. And I'll be honest, the reason I was enlightened to this line of logic was actually Sai who sparked it with a joke in our weekly ParCast podcast. So some of you might have heard the rough connections, but when I tell you how much more there was to this idea, I think most of you will be baffled that there are this many connections connections and again after looking into it I don't think it was an accident so if you're new to the channel the way I view the world is by making connections so let me connect you to my vision the par vision as usual, let me start where Sai and I started with this idea. This all began with our personal favorite crackhead theory that spawned at the beginning of Egghead in chapter 1063, with this dog. Yes, the Recycle Collie or Recycle Wan is what caught our eye, and we actually have spoken about our recurring idea about Vegapunk dying in junction with this panel right here. The reason this panel sticks out to us is because though this dog was shown only on one page in the entirety of Egghead, Oda decided to give it a narrator box introduction. Even until now, this dog has not reappeared. Now if you don't know how these boxes are normally used, honestly it kind of changes from arc to arc. Like none of the Vegapunks were introduced using these. We see the same box was used to give us setting changes or time changes, but at the same time this was how Oda introduced Kaido, the King of Beasts. This is how Oda told us Luchi was in his awakened leopard form. The reveal that Stussy was a clone of Miss Buckingham Stussy of the Rocks Pirates and the first successful clone as well. The introduction and name reveal of Saint J. Garcia Saturn and that the kid pirates were destroyed, St. Garling's reveal, all the sword members in Blackbeard Pirates, and the list could go on and on within even this arc. It makes sense because it's the narrator box, but there were other forms of announcements. A lot of characters just had block text on the screen, or sometimes to give information, Oda used this papyrus paper-like box instead. And the overarching point is that the list of significant mentions like Kaido, Figarland, all of the Gorsei's names, and so much more are all obviously important mentions mentions and reveals, and alongside that, Oda decided to use this same level of reveal for the recycled dog that got one panel at the beginning of Egghead. This set a red flag for Sai and I since then, and we have been wondering what might come of that because the more time we get where this dog doesn't show up, the more suspicious it becomes. Why would Oda even choose to announce this dog like this if you were never planning on using it ever? And that's where some recent reveals or decisions make things slightly more interesting. For example, the Vice Admiral seem to have a very strong naming scheme centralized around dogs, from Doberman, Dole, Hound, and slightly more obscure ones for non-dog owners like Bluegrass, which is a reference to an international brand of pet food. Also, the anime took the recycled dog panel and for some reason extended it out to have the dog chase Luffy and his crew and even bite a Yonko. The last time someone bit a Yonko, it was Momo, and Momo is pretty important, right? But jokes aside, I don't think we were wrong to at least make a solid note of this dog. But now let me briefly explain our crack head theory that we jokingly created back around chapter 1064 when Shaka told Dragon that he was going to die. From then we had been more or less on board with accepting the fact that yeah Vegapunk could die by the end of the arc, which ironically we're seeing the progression of that currently, but with an interesting nuance to it given we have no grasp of how the satellites function without the devil fruit while connected to the brain of a deceased person that only exists as a byproduct of the devil fruit. Now I can rationalize that there are devil fruits that can leave lasting effects like Punk Hazard is the simplest example, the terraforming that occurred there doesn't stop because the devil fruits aren't active. We very rarely get an example of what happens to a devil fruits effects after a user dies, but Boa did allude to the idea that when she passes away, whoever was petrified would not passively be liberated or even actively reverted by the next user of her power. So sure, the brain that Vegapunk has created and accumulated memories with can exist beyond his life, he can create something to sustain and maintain it, but if he is functionally dead with his heart flatlining but his brain is still functioning, 
thing, then is Vegapunk truly dead yet? I mean, it's a hard concept to wrap around because once your heart stops, that's the indication that you're dead. And we can bypass the heart's function and manually keep someone alive, but if the brain is still also functioning, does Vegapunk's devil fruit have to be recycled into a new fruit? Or what even happens here? These are questions that not only plagued us back then, but even still now. And so going back to chapter 1067, when we got the understanding of punk records and how Vegapunk created an antenna to connect him to the records, the next question arose from the fact that Vegapunk asked Luffy to take him off the island. And then we joked that technically, if Vegapunk left without punk records, then he would become effectively lobotomized because his brain was disconnected. And so we laughed saying, what if the way Vegapunk sustains himself off the island is within the recycled dog's body? They lose the Stella body, which would give the Straw Hats a meaningful loss, but not to the same degree on Saba Odi, but would give the world government their win. And this great area would create a way for Vegapunk to escape and live while not being the overpowered character he is from a narrative perspective in that his role as the world's smartest man basically overshadows Chopper, Robin, Frankie, Usopp, and many other characters all at the same time. So removing him from the story would allow these other characters to meaningfully breathe. And if you were lobotomized and within a dog, that would be kind of hilarious and create a gag where like Lilith said at the start, they can't remove the primal urges of living creatures. So it'd be the world's smartest man overpowered by the will of a dog that eats garbage. But maybe Vegapunk could prove useful by instinctively solving complex problems in a super clutch way that could be supplementary to the characters rather than cannibalizing their roles and would allow for cool interactions with Neo Mads and just the story in general. And fast forwarding to where we're at now, it seems like we have all the pieces to Exodia for this crackhead idea. Vegapunk's body is essentially lost, punk record seems to be intact, and there is a question of what the afterlife means for Vegapunk's satellites and his main body now that we're here. And ironically, Sanji is currently carrying the body apart from everyone else, separated from every group, and is seemingly headed across the main island, which again, we have no idea where the recycled dog is, but no one else has spotted it. And it's suspicious that Oda gave that introduction to the dog for it to play no role throughout all of Egghead. And this dog, by the way, yes, recycles wasted materials and seems self-sustaining in that nature, which was our exact idea that it would recycle Vegapunk, essentially serving as a vessel for his will and memories, which in hindsight is kind of thematically relevant to Egghead with the exploration of wills, memories, and situations like Kuma, but more importantly, objects and devil fruits, something we still haven't fully understood yet. And so there was many iterations, jokes, and openings for this theory that was basically a pipe dream because we both thought it would be hilarious for Oda to do something like this. And when the idea first came to us, an instant reference we had was Goddard, the mechanical dog from Jimmy Neutron, which also eats scraps and poops out recycling, but is essentially a self-sustaining, self-aware dog made fully of metal and electronic eyes. Goddard is Jimmy Neutron's best friend, his mechanical canine that can be described to be his unlimited, infinitely functioning Swiss army knife that finds a use in every situation. Now, obviously, a lot of the connections I'm about to share, if you already know Jimmy Neutron, might be a flash of nostalgia, but also a shocker that you forgot how much there was in similarity to the current Egghead arc. And if you don't know this show, I'm sure you'll still find all of these connections even without the full context enough to spark some thoughts and ideas. And full disclaimer, I know the next bulk of this video is extensive. That's a testament to how deep these connections are. But if I start to lose you on a part, I'll timestamp this video so you can skip around or skip straight to the conclusion to maybe give you a bit of extra motivation to listen through the center part of this video. So again, to be transparent, the reason why I jumped on this train, especially recently, was because I have a running disdain for a portion of Vegapunk's character in that despite him being the smartest character in the One Piece verse, he falls short in some forgivable aspects, but it's still frustrating that the laser defense dome that was a huge plot point and continuously touted to be impenetrable was in reality very penetrable by literally everything and everyone. And the value of this invention has been proven to be less effective than Doflamingo's birdcage, which is made out of string. That dome was actually impenetrable. Not even Fujitora's meteors could break through. But though Luffy said he felt like he was going to die by going through it twice, we saw Bonnie break through after exploding and with relatively no injuries to the point that she was able to incapacitate so many marines quickly enough that they couldn't even tell what was happening. And among other similar slandering things like some of his decisions or the password fiasco that led Sai to say an incredible thing which was that Vegapunk was kind of like Professor Calamitous from Jimmy. 
Jimmy Neutron. And Professor Calamitous was an Einstein looking S character that was a super genius that rivaled the genius of Jimmy Neutron. Which I realized this would probably be a good time to give a quick summary of the series just in case. The show is called The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron where Jimmy is a super genius child capable of making time machines, travel in space, and had a lab in his clubhouse basement. It's hard to compile how smart the show made him out to be, but despite it being a fictional show, they made a lot of real world references to give an actual realistic nuance parameter to his science in the scope of a kids show. And so Professor Calamitous was a scientist whose major weakness and quirk that gave Jimmy Neutron the edge over him was that everything he did was a failure because he couldn't finish anything. And that single quirk kind of parallels the perfectionist Vegapunk who failed his Kaido fruit because he couldn't make it the right color and just left it uncompleted and was so defeated over it he was ashamed. But it's not just that, there's also the failed lightsaber with an obvious flaw to attract bugs, but even if we were to go to a more serious angle with Kuma's memory erasure, he even technically failed that because he has no understanding of why it failed. His laser dome is definitely not impenetrable, one of his satellites created an unbreakable password that was easily broken, the sea beast that he tried to reprogram entirely he couldn't get to the last step, and that's the same thing with Logias it seems too. And if we went back in time to his childhood island of Katakuri, he left his geothermal heating system incomplete. Now some of these are different in nature from the quirk Professor Calamitous had, but if you were to transform into a perfectionist scientist who is riddled with failures, it would be paralleled. And this was the jumping point to a long list of crazy coincidences. Let's start from the easiest, most obvious one, which was the head shape. See, we know that Vegapunk is inspired by an Einstein-like character or a character of the tongue sticking out face of Albert Einstein, but his head shape has nothing to do with Vegapunk. You could say it's big because he has an egg head, but it's also not an egg shape. But instead, if you were to compare Vegapunk's head to Professor Calamitous and Jimmy Neutron, you basically see a one-to-one -one comparison to this head shape that is so unique and almost iconic of the hit show Jimmy Neutron. In the show, this head shape was constantly explained away by Jimmy's big brain. And obviously, given Professor Calamitous' genius and similarity to Jimmy, the creators gave him a similar head shape shaped as well, with an interesting headband that's basically in the same place of where Vegapunk surgically separated his skull. And honestly, I can't think of any other reference material with this head shape besides Jimmy Neutron and Stella himself. It's that unique, but it does not stop there. So Professor Calamitous' introduction is probably the most important because just like in One Piece, we were catfished by a giant robot first appearing instead of the mad genius himself. And our first introduction to Vegapunk Lilith was the opening of Vega Force 1 chest plate which revealed a cockpit with our super genius or rather one of them and just like that in Jimmy Neutron where Professor Clamus had a super android Gundam like invention that opened its chest plate which revealed the super genius on top of that a running gag with this calamitous character or I guess the early ultimate goals was to create a giant particle laser beam that disintegrates anything kind of similar to what we're seeing of mother flame but I know obviously Vegapunk didn't create that exactly but here's another funny one ironically both Jimmy Neutron and Professor Professor Calamitous dabbled in climate control. Jimmy almost froze the earth, whereas Professor Calamitous was looking to flood the entire planet by melting the polar ice caps, which is low key similar to how Vegapunk wanted to melt his childhood town to make it hospitable, just like Jimmy wanting to make his hometown hospitable too. And now global climate control is on the radar for Vegapunk. But anyways, let's stop with these loose connections. You're probably losing interest. Up until I tell you that the second episode for Professor Calamitous was called The Great Egg Heist. So suspicious suspiciously similar to the egghead incident. Calamitous wanted this egg that allowed him to harness the unlimited energy and the egg was also from an ancient civilization that far surpassed the modern technology. Sounds familiar, right? Well, hold on to that egg part because the egg was yet again the only thing that could power Professor Calamitous' disintegrating laser that was basically an ancient weapon because he was going to use it to conquer the world. But again, hold on to your eggs because we're about to blast off. If the head shape, mechanical dog, genius intellect, Einstein reference, and egg points didn't get you feeling like there was a connection, how about the fact that in Egghead, we have the super genius Vegapunk wanting to get more done and become more efficient, so he decides to clone himself six times, each with a distinct personality. Well, what I just described wasn't actually Egghead, it was Jimmy Neutron. And that's not just an entire episode, that's one of the recurring plots of the story. Jimmy Neutron needed to get more things done and his solution was to clone himself six times. And get this, each clone had a different personality. Pretty crazy, right? Now each clone wasn't as nuanced or specifically named like it was for Vegapunk satellites, but there was a traitor clone. In One Piece, it was Gri, 
agreed while there wasn't a greed clone in Jim Neutron, there was an evil clone that honestly his main problem was greed because he wanted to be the only Jimmy. He said the world only needed one Jimmy Neutron just like how York said the world only needed one Vegapunk. And I thought that was a crazy connection because the concept and specifically the number and overall plot was also similar. Jimmy even had to override the evil Jimmy's computer with a passcode and he managed to do it fairly easy. But there was so many other mini similarities like how Jimmy Neutron hacked global communications just like Vegapunk, but also he secretly got in contact with a super advanced alien race that ended up betraying him, which is kind of like York's situation, sort of. And if I were to layer on another detail, the concept of Vegapunk's Devil Fruit, where his brain has infinite capacity to hold memories and so he continuously gets smarter, that's also something that happens where Sheen, a character who originally was going to be a Japanese character, uses a helmet that allows him to get Vegapunk's Devil Fruit power basically, and his head grows infinitely until he becomes a threat to all of humanity. And his head ends up looking basically the same as Vegapunk's. And so I honestly think there was an eerie amount of similarities, but the craziest one I'm going to withhold for a second, because that's the one that makes you think a lot about what concepts Oda might have in his bag for the Egghead arc. But before then, especially for people who haven't watched this show, you probably are thinking, well, it's just an American show. Why would Oda even reference this? And was it made at the right time for it to be something Oda could have used for Vegapunk? And that's where it gets interesting, because then we'd have to talk about how much of Egghead was pre-planned and if every core aspect of Vegapunk that we know today was what Oda had originally planned when he first thought of Vegapunk's concept in early One Piece around Water 7. And I honestly don't know how much of Egghead arc Oda had pre-planned, especially down to the details like how we got introduced to the landscape. I think each one of us who has played retro entertainment could pick out a reference, whether it be the Jetsons, Mario, Zelda, Godzilla, Astro Boy, and so many more is present to the point that when it was animated, a lot of us instantly got a feel for Dragon Ball and Capsule Core. Egghead feels like a giant ode to so much of what Oda loves in the entertainment world, and it makes sense because it's the arc after he introduced Gear 5, which was the power he had been waiting to reveal for the entirety of the One Piece series because it was a power that was a way for him to make a tribute to all the lost arts of storytelling in the past, the popping out eyes and crazy rubber hose-like powers that Luffy constantly warps reality with. And he even verbatim said a lot of it was inspired by Tom and Jerry, which we have talked and demonstrated to eternity and back about, and Tom and Jerry makes sense as it's a classic that got revived in modern times, but predated Oda as a Hanna-Barbera production that had an insane global cultural effect. And now we're even feeling that in One Piece. So for Oda to pull weird references, I wouldn't put it past him. And there's even more obscure examples like the Tales of Purin Purin that someone mentioned in SBS 34. They noticed a background Marine character's design was from this puppet show. Oda even made the name of the Marine Commodore Purin Purin. And the question was simply if it was a coincidence or a direct reference. And Oda said he must have done it subconsciously because he forgot that it was a puppet show that his older sister used to watch, and it was just a vague memory. And I point that out to say that honestly, some of the Jimmy Neutron connections feel a lot like that. Like maybe if one of Oda's kids watched Jimmy Neutron, it might have leaked in. But it was way too specific and more like Oda was actually a fan. So then I looked into Jimmy Neutron's origins, maybe for some reason it had more notoriety than I even gave it. And that's when I was surprised. See, Jimmy Neutron went through an interesting arc. Technically, the entire series was a sequel to a pilot movie, and that pilot movie was based off a pilot episode called Runaway Rocket Boy in 1998, and that pilot episode had two very interesting beginnings. The original script was from the 80s, but in between that time, it had an interesting origin which was Johnny Quasar. That was the original name for Jimmy Neutron, and just that name was super interesting to me, and you might be wondering why. It was because there was a random unused detail that Oda actually introduced Vegapunk with. Even until death, Vegapunk exhibited mostly normal dialogue. But when he first showed up in 1066, he kept on inserting Quasar into his speech. I read Quasar help. Three times he said that. And maybe it was just Oda putting in astrophysics terms into his speech, but why drop it entirely later on? It feels less like a gag that Oda gives certain characters through their laughs or the weird ways they end their dialogue bubbles, and actually just a quick reference to establish something. This Johnny Quasar head shaped character referencing Johnny Quasar by saying his his name and just moving on. And you might be asking why Oda would do that, except it wouldn't be the first time Oda made a reference to some obscure pop culture reference that most of us don't really know until Oda says
says it in the SBS or an interview or via our extremely thorough community that is able to comb through the entire internet to find references for Oda's material basically before the chapter officially drops. For example, in chapter 1111, Oda has Luffy use a baseball bat and helmet in such a random fashion, but then you step back and realize he did that because the chapter released the same day as the Major League Baseball Associations was announcing a major collab with the Boston Red Sox in celebration of One Piece's 25th anniversary of its anime series. And Oda has openly said that he would have made reference to other medias using Luffy if it lined up with his schedule. And then you're probably like, so this American pre-pilot episode of Jim Neutron that no one knew about is something that Oda knew? And that's where it gets even more interesting because Johnny Quasar debuted in 1995 right about when Oda said he had gathered everything he needed for this story. And this 40 second clip aired only one time. Keep in mind the internet did not exist back then, but yet this clip basically went viral. This 40 second clip gained fame as it got awards for best character in animation and best in show for Lightwave 3D Engine which it used to bring state of the art and futuristic animations to the screen. Remember this was before the internet, before HD, 720p, 480p, this was some of the first CGI animation that gained notoriety. And the first 3 seconds of this clip was distributed with Lightwave 3D Demo Reel in 1994. So if you had this then you were able to randomly see the precursor to Jimmy Neutron. And if you're wondering why it's significant it's because for the entertainment industry that was adopting new technologies this was something on your radar. This engine was used for Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica, Babylon 5, Titanic, Avatar, the one with blue people. And so this could be a reason Oda was able to see this but there's actually more lore that ties to the lost history because this was pre-internet era and this was an award winning animation. When Jimmy Neutron eventually aired people remembered the original and were really confused but the 40 second clip was completely lost to history. It actually became documented on Lost Media Wiki and Redditors and Internet Sleuths came together to bring it to the internet by 2017. So after 20 years this original clip resurfaced just in time for Oda to get reminded about something like this. All there were before were screenshots and memories of this forgotten gem that served as the progenitor for a lot of CGI and TV history. And in that pilot the only core things about it all was that there was a rocket, this weird unique shaped head boy that was a genius and his mechanical dog. And these references could all be a coincidence but now let me tell you the craziest thing about all of this. Remember I said this could also relate to Egghead itself like the giant egg? See I covered the end product Jimmy Neutron and its origins but what shot Jimmy Neutron into literal space in terms of success was arguably one of my favorite movies that also showed a more polished version of the CGI that was originally debuted with and given awards for. The movie Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius that aired in 2001 and it broke records by cutting production period for an animated film in half. The standard used to be 4 years and this movie was done in 2 and on top of that it was Nickelodeon's first computer generated animated series. This movie jump started so much and I could talk about the history of this series more but let me cut to the chase. You know how Egghead Arc has a god that seemingly has to be resurrected in some sort but was celebrated and known in the past and there was a dance that has been introduced that was kind of silly and there's also a reveal of an extremely advanced civilization that was way more advanced than the main characters are accustomed to. Oh and a giant egg? Yeah. Well the same with Jimmy Neutron. I know that sounds crazy but strap in for this. So the pilot of the movie is essentially Jimmy unintentionally made the discovery that aliens existed and it shocked the world. Those aliens are the Yokians, so these floating eggs. Well in reality the eggshell is their advanced technology and they evolved so far that they're just yolk now. This advanced race of goo comes to earth to take sacrificial offerings in secret. They took all the parents and had them had a mind control device attached to their heads. These devices on their heads kind of connect to them to a unimind, it made it so that someone could control them from a master mainframe and this connection was kind of like a mix between punk records and the authority chips. But the most important aspect was what they were used for. So the point of the movie was that the Yokians revered a giant egg, sort of. And what they used their authority chips was for to have the parents do a dance to resurrect the god, Paltra. Paltra being a chicken version of Mothra from Godzilla. And so we zoomed through a bunch but you could probably feel connections here. For one, I always thought it was weird that in chapter 1062, when we saw the Godzilla monster hologram, Luffy called it a space monster. Why not just a monster? But that monster feels a lot like Godzilla, at least in Ode 2, but actually has some visual similarities to Poultra. It has the wide mouth beak, but also the stalk eyes. Even in my reaction on stream, I remember thinking this reminded me of something and I can't help but see Poultra, especially because the disconnected eyes and space monster assumption. I feel like given the One Piece world, there are so many monsters that space monster was just random. 
and I felt like a direct reference to Jimmy Neutron. But even if we ignore that aspect, I couldn't help but laugh at the hilarious connection of the dancing that everyone does for this egg to hatch. Now it's obviously not the Nika dance, but it had a similar feel, a lighthearted dance that brought a smile to your face. And again, I could actually add a lot more details, but I was just baffled by the various amount of random coincidental points. From the six clones, each with their own personalities, to the genius, to the head shape, to the dancing, to the egg, the monsters, the quirks, and finally back to the mechanical dog that was randomly highlighted by Oda. That was the only core concept besides the head shape that was in the source material. And so I do think somewhere in this mess of a connection is some sort of link back to what's to come in Egghead. For one, if I were to give the dog's importance even more validation, it's the type of dog. In the translation, we are given that it's a recycled collie, which a collie is a type of herding dog that's known for guarding and protecting, which maybe if we add in recycling, then it could be that in the final phases of Egghead, we see this dog take a shining moment to maybe protect punk records or recycle the Vegapunk somehow. But from another angle, we know that Vegapunk is a character of Einstein, and Einstein actually had a dog that from what I could gather was a wire fox terrier, which honestly the anime depiction of the recycled dog makes it hard to choose one way or the other, but similarly was a kind of protective nature dog. According to Einstein, his wire fox terrier Chico was smart and felt sorry for him because he received so much mail, which is why he tried to bite Einstein's mailman, which it would be funny if Oda had the recycled dog bite Big News Morgans eventually, but not to get distracted, if we look at the current landscape of Egghead, which Oda graciously provided us in chapter 1111, we see that the straw hats on the island have to cross most of the island on the way to the giant ship. And so I wouldn't be surprised if we come across this dog at some point. And I'm not sure if the anime extended scene got the size correct, but apparently the dog is huge and can maybe even serve to be some kind of Trojan horse, hiding something or someone inside. If this were Jimmy Neutron, then Goddard, the mechanical dog there, basically is used as the ace in a situation, always finding a way to be perfectly useful at the tail end of a conflict. And maybe just like the food machine that was present in the dog's introduction, right when Luffy needs it, it might come in handy. Obviously, this was meant to be a funny theory that just laid out how many crazy coincidences there were between Jimmy Neutron and the Egghead arc in One Piece. It's up to you to figure out. If you think it's just a coincidence, sure. Or the several one-to-one -one paralleling details might end up convincing you that Oda might have used this as a reference material, kind of like Tom and Jerry for Gear 5. It wouldn't be that crazy given the international fame Jimmy Neutron got as a series. And so maybe it was just a reference, but if you take into account the quick focus that Oda gave the Recycle Kali, maybe these references lead up to some foreseeable final detail that ends up surfacing in the end of the Egghead arc. When Sai and I originally thought of this idea, none of these details were even apparent in our minds. It was simply a fun idea that would be hilarious given what it would mean to have Vegapunk's brain transferred to a dog, and the irony of having the world's smartest man relegated to the body of a dog, unable to surpass his vessel. In our headcanon, the dog would become Frankie's pet or eventually become the way Neo Maz is reunited, where they laugh at the dog's appearance, but still Vegapunk gets a moment of shine demonstrating his genius. And that's when I realized there could even be more merit to the idea because actually the introduction to Vegapunk in Egghead was under the pretense that he once again failed and could not completely control a living creature's will. That seems to be a recurring problem actually. There was always a lack of control over these primal desires like we see that of the sea beasts, even Vegapunk's own greed, and even the counterparts in their relative clone personalities, Boa's weakness to Luffy even as a seraphim, and then Kuma's empty husk of a body and a few other examples. And so what if the way Vegapunk has to figure that part out or solve it is by trying to tame the urges of a dog, namely the recycle dog, and by doing so Vegapunk then solves a last step in his research, one that actually connects to the Awakenings, right? Because Zoan Awakenings, if gone wrong, is essentially the foreign substance taking full control over the will of the user, which in that regard, Vegapunk doesn't seem to know how to achieve Awakenings in either direction. Given he has the authority chip research and so much more, it seems like this first-hand experience of how to control a will might be what he needs to finally reach the level of the ancient kingdom that far surpassed him. I mean, even look at his satellites, he could not remove the primal desire so badly that he couldn't turn off the desire to eat, poop, or sleep even within a robot clone of himself like Edison or Pythagoras, and had to put it all into one single satellite that covers his desires. And I'm actually going to continue this conversation into a separate video, expanding on that note, because the rest of this conversation just split into three different directions for me. One is related to Devil Fruits, another for Green Blood, and another one for Vegapunk's death. And on that note, before I close out, I do want to say that I don't think that Vegapunk is going to fully die by the end of the arc. And it might actually be that Vegapunk's apparent death in the recent chapters is actually the plot point that connects every mystery 
mystery we have left in the arc, including whether or not this recycled dog ends up surprising us like most of this arc already has. And so, like always, thank you for connecting with me, and I'm looking forward to connecting with you all on the next part vision. <laughs>